commend what you're doing and mend them. You know, if, if uh, all towns uh, had the spirit that you folks did right here, uh, we'd have more and more people following through on history, which is so exciting. And so much of it took place right here. And I want to tell you tonight about the Civil War Roundtable, the American Revolution Roundtable, and the Washington Association, which are three very uh, dominant and exciting organizations right here. And everybody can reach out and attend the meetings and enjoy the same uh, success that we have had. And this Civil War Roundtable, uh, we feel, is uh, without question one of the top three Civil War roundtables in the country. Our last meeting last Thursday night was just fantastic. Over 70 people were there. And uh, uh, we get that sort of crowd every time. And uh, it's very, very exciting. We meet uh, at the, uh, the Freelinghuisen Arboretum. Uh, Rodney Freelinghuisen uh, suggested we meet there. And thanks to Rich's persistence, uh, we're still there. I want to now have you join me on a little journey and I'm going to take you through some of the great battles and the great leaders of the Civil War. And we're going to start with the Confederacy at Bull Run. <clears throat> and the two great leaders at that particular battle, which whomped the Union. The Union went in to end the war, they thought, very quickly. And they ran into two commanders named Pierre Beauregard and Joseph Johnston. And uh, if it wasn't for the fact that the Confederacy wasn't trying to uh, win property at that time, they could have marched right into Washington, but they didn't. A few years ago, uh, the guys said, hey, let's start another one, the American Revolution Roundtable. After all, this is where right here in Morristown. And as Rich remembers, we got, and Dick, uh, we got John Cunningham, the great uh, historian, to uh, agree to appear <laughs> at a meeting and his hometown, and 150 people showed up. I mean, it was amazing. And uh, so we started off the American Revolution Roundtable, and we had our meetings, Cultural the Cultural Center. Center. That's where we held all the meetings as we were finishing uh, doing, uh, completing the great work on our uh, auditorium. Finally, uh, the Washington headquarters opened up, and we meet there. We're going to keep this uh, short, but what can you say uh, except that George Washington was such a force. I uh, studied uh, Washington since I became president of the, of the first round table, which Jeannie has now taken my place. But without George Washington, uh, it's a question of whether we would ever have won the war. Uh, here, when you stop to think of it, the British deposited 50,000 trained people with all the supplies in their Navy and the Hessians, and, and, and we were a group of farmers and, and uh, uh, men who uh, took up arms to uh, become the uh, Continental Army and uh, were mistreated as far as uh, getting supplies. I mean, they didn't have the proper weapons. They had no clothing. They went through these terrible winters and how they ever endured. And George Washington kept the forces together. Mm -hmm.